From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. The Deputy Prime Minister yesterday voiced optimism that water and sewage customers are prepared for price increases as he hinted they will no longer receive their first 3,000 gallons for free. Desmond Bannister, who as Minister of Works, also has responsibility for the corporation, said the government has little choice but to drag the water utility into the 21st century following the economic blowout inflicted by COVID-19 and Hurricane Dorian. With no tariff increase for 22 years, he suggested it's simply cannot continue to sell water at a price below the cost incurred in purchasing it. From Consolidated Water, the BISIC's listed reverse osmosis plant operator and then rely on annual $20 million plus taxpayer subsidies to cover the difference. Besides ending the free provision of 3,000 gallons per customer every month, Mr. Bannister said a price increase will also encourage water conservation and better use of a scarce essential resource. The Bahamas would have been on the hook for hundreds of millions of dollars and its credit rating endangered if government had halted Bahamas Petroleum Company's oil exploration. Ramal Ferreira, Minister of the Environment and Housing, yesterday reiterated to the House of Assembly the Minnes administration believed this nation would have paid a heavy price for failing to renew BPC's licenses and or not providing it with the necessary approvals for its Perseverance One well, suggesting BPC's licenses and agreements were legally watertight and could not be broken without inflation a further substantial cost on already strained Bahamian taxpayers. Mr. Ferreira said the Bahamas would have faced far greater liabilities had the government blocked the wells drilling. Public Disclosure Commission Chairman Miles LaRota has been chosen by the PLP's Candidates Committee to fight as their election candidate for the Pinewood constituency, the Tribune has confirmed. Mr. LaRota was confirmed on Tuesday night alongside other prospective candidates, including businesswoman and former Miss Bahamas Pia Glover role for the Marathon constituency. PLP insiders said Mr. LaRota's resignation from the PDC will be forthcoming once he is officially ratified by the PLP's National General Council. However, the news has enraged some Free National Movement supporters who told the Tribune yesterday that Mr. LaRota's position as chairman of the PDC has placed him in a position that gives the upper hand over Pinewood incumbent Ruben Ramming. This comes as both parties, the PLP and the Free National Movement, move to ratify a full slate of candidates ahead of election season. Four digital billboards have been erected across New Providence to send out warnings about missing children to facilitate the rollout of the mandatory Action Rescue Children Operation Alert System. Speaking at an event at police headquarters yesterday, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said information about missing children will be broadcasted on billboards stationed at several sites on the island, like Linden Pindling International Airport. Full implementation of the Marco Alert System has long been a promise of the Minnis-led administration, despite several promises last year, it is still not clear when the system will be fully up and running. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, as states lift mask rules and ease restrictions on restaurants and other businesses because of falling case numbers, public health officials say authorities are overlooking potentially more dangerous COVID-19 variants that are quietly spreading through the U.S. Scientists widely agree that the U.S. simply doesn't have enough of a handle on the variants to roll back public health measures and is at risk of fumbling yet another phase of the pandemic after letting the virus rage through the country and kill nearly 500,000 people. In the first Mexican shelter reached by migrants after trekking through the Guatemalan jungle, some 150 migrants are sleeping in its dormitories and another 150 lie on thin mattresses spread across the floor of its chapel. Only six weeks into the new year, the shelter known as the 72 has hosted nearly 1,500 migrants compared to the 3,000 all of last year. It has halved its dormitory space due to the pandemic. That wasn't a problem last year because few migrants arrived, but this year it's been overwhelmed. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. High pressure ridging continues to promote pleasant and breezy to windy conditions over the Bahamas. Beachgoers should exercise caution along eastern and southern shorelines due to the risk of rip currents and rough surf. For all areas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny, warm and breezy to windy, with few spotty showers today. Mostly fair and warm with a stray shower or two tonight. Small craft caution remains in effect in the northwest Bahamas. Small craft advisory 
remains in effect in the central and southeast Bahamas. Winds southeast to south at 15 to 20 knots in the northwest Bahamas. East to southeast at 15 to 25 knots in the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean in the northwest Bahamas and 5 to 8 feet but higher in gusts in the central and southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 85 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 75. The sun will set this afternoon at 6.08 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.42. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.